Hey, shooting stars and pine trees. Well, we're reaching the end of September, and to October. So I decided that for uh, this video, I'd be repeating what I did last year. But instead of a comic, I'm gonna be reviewing something a little different. I'm gonna be covering a novel. And this novel is Grouty Falls Journal 3. This review is obviously going to be pretty different since this is a novel, not a comic. Yes, there are illustrations and I will discuss them, but I will not be giving them their own segment like I do with the comic reviews. I'm also going to limit myself a bit more on the synopsis of the book since there is so much that happens here. And because this is linked to a show, it does reveal major revelations that the show never truly confirmed. So yeah, just letting you know, warning spoilers. So I've never really reviewed a novel before. Uh, this is going to be very uh, new for all of us. But, you know, I think I'll be able to handle it. And, uh, you know, if I suck, well, hopefully it'll be entertaining enough for you guys. But, you know, uh, I thought, you Get know... Get to the point! Hey, you want to live here run free? Yeah, so I thought. Anyway, let's begin. So in case you haven't watched Gravity Falls before or my review of Lost Legends, the series follows the adventures of the twins Dipper and Mabel Pines, who after being sent to the town of Gravity Falls for the summer with their great uncle Stan, find a mysterious journal with a number three on it. The journal reveals a world of secrets and mystery, leading to an event that, let's just say, is a little weird. This novel is written as if it is Journal 3, with the first half being written by the mysterious author from 1975 to 1981. This section starts off as a catalog of creatures and supernatural occurrences in the town, some of which of course did pop up in the series, like the gnomes in the bottomless pit. But it also features things that didn't pop in the series, but was created by Alex Hirsch, the show's creator. Things like the Cursed Door, a supernatural event where it seems that any door in town with a number 13 turns into a portal to another dimension, which is possibly linked to the lunar cycle. And then there is the Killbillies, a group of bloodthirsty mountain men who kill and devour innocent people and proceeds to seal their overalls. Gee, how this not get in the show? No, seriously, like, this isn't the weirdest thing that's been on the show. Hell, it's not even the most messed up thing to be on the show. Everything in this section is just a great combination of creepy, funny, and just plain weird. Though as you proceed to read, the section starts to slowly evolve from a cryptozoologist trying to learn the truth of this world to a man playing with forces he doesn't understand. The next section jumps ahead 30 years during the events of the show. This section is more or less a recap of what happened in the series with Dipper and Mabel, and for one page Zeus, and talking about their point of view of the adventure that they went on. You'd think it'd be a bit of a slog for someone who already watched the show, but we do end up getting some information that the show probably didn't get to have time to divulge. For example, in the episode Scary Oki, Zeus returned to a zombie, and though it was made very clear that they were able to make him, you know, human again, they never really told us how they did it, and what they had to do was uh, pretty funny. The last section essentially combines the two sections before it, with it being written after the episode Tales of Two Stans, which revealed that Stan didn't just have a twin brother named Ford, but that he was also, in fact, the writer of the journal and has been lost in the multiverse. We get to learn some of the adventures that Ford had from something silly like traversing a dimension known as the M dimension where everything and everyone is shaped like the letter M, to the more serious stuff like meeting the Oracle of Dimension 52. I wouldn't be surprised if that turned out it was meant to be a reference to DC Comics' 52, since at least until the events of Death Metal and later Infinite Frontier, there were only 52 Earths in the DC multiverse. But whatever, I'm getting off track. We also get at Ford's opinion on the gang while he's retelling his adventures that he had with them. I won't say much and I'll leave it for you guys to figure out yourself, but I will say what he had to say about Zeus was pretty hilarious. We still get Dipper and Mabel's perspective, but for the most part, Ford is back being the main writer in the story. All around, the book does a great job of being a deep dive in the lore of Gravity Falls. Alex Hirsch continues to blend comedy, weirdness, and Lovecraftian horror and mystery pretty damn well. When it comes to the characters, we mostly get things from Ford, Dipper, and Mail's perspective, but they are still pretty consistent with how they were in the show. Though Ford 
as being the most interesting since we do get to see more of his backstory and his personality shifting from a very optimistic man who believes he can change the world to a man that though still intends on doing good has some serious trust issues and is of course very paranoid after what he's seen besides the amazing writing you can read from the start there's also ciphers code messages within the book that are just tons of fun to decode if you are a fan of puzzles you are going to enjoy this and though yeah you could skip them i recommend that you don't since some of them do contain some massive revelations the illustrations in the book are also well done still clearly being gravity falls but with a hint of other things that aren't exactly family friendly i really got to give respect to alex for being able to get away with stuff like this in a book that is well relatively for older kids. And I do mean older kids, like kids who are about like 11 to 12. All around, I really enjoyed this novel. If you are a fan of Gravity Falls or are looking for something with a fun world building and interesting mysteries, creepy elements, and puzzles that challenge you, Journal 3 is the book for you. There's also a special edition, which I won't say much on, but let's just say if you have a black light, there are a lot more surprises heading your way. Though because of the pricing, I'd probably stick for the standard. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know uh, what you thought about this. Do you want me to cover more novels? And uh, for the next video, well, like I said before, we're reaching October. And we're going to start in a very interesting way where we're going to see the terror of the zombie queen. See ya.